with pause impact. Sorry guys, a little, a little issues, but no worries. We are live, 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 and this is what happens when you're live. So we are super excited that you guys are joining us. Thank you for our, all of our listeners who are tuning in to Paul's Impact. We are Houston's first radio show dedicated to people with HIV, their friends and family, right here on Real Talk 100 Radio. Um, hold on, guys. I'm going to turn down the volume. Just a little bit. All right. So we have a very special guest tonight, um, Isaac, right? Yes, yeah. Isaac. He is a, a HIV advocate. He's an, also an author, which is, he has a, a book about living with HIV and uh, the struggles. So that's, you know, so, so um, incredible. But also he's the founder of Project Red, which is um, an organization committed to dismantling the stigma and discrimination surrounding HIV and AIDS and people living with HIV and AIDS. In 2017, he published his first book, The Epidemic, Living with HIV in the 21st Century. So we are super excited to talk to him about um, people who are living with HIV and the linkage to care and how that is so important to be able to, once you're, once you are once you find out that you're HIV positive and uh, and you have to stay in care. So in staying in care, that means that you have um, U equals U, which means you're undetectable. But we're going to go over that um, in detail with him. But go ahead, Isaac. Come on, welcome on board. Welcome to Pause hello, Impact. Hello. Um, thank you so much for coming on, you again, Search me. Notice. We, that's, not, that, that's been the theme of the show lately. But... Um, we're super excited because you're also with the Houston I'm Live campaign. Yes. And we were actually fortunate enough to have them on our show when we first started. So we started this back in June of this year. And um, I think they were like our third or fourth guests that to come on our show. And Jeffrey ain't called me. I'm about to get on them by that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we had uh, Adonis. And Luis, Luis. Oh, okay, and, Adonis and uh, uh, Luis and, and Jonathan. Okay, awesome. We so had, had three great people. Yeah, yes, we had three great people come on our show, and we talked about um, what it means to be living with HIV, also prep, because um, they're all on prep, mm -hmm. and we, all t we know we talked about what is prep, and at the time it was only Trivada, but it was, it's a tool. So we talked a little bit about that, so you guys can check out our and we weren't doing um, YouTube live or we weren't doing YouTube at the channel so now it's we want to have them back but I'm excited to have you because you're you have been doing so much and just speaking to you just briefly um, you were saying some acronyms that I just was going all over my head that you see MA you see USCA, USCA <laughs> uh, the biomedical conference that yeah. just happened here and uh, you are a huge activist in the community so in Houston and and you're constantly traveling, so we're so blessed to have you. Uh, it, just the time linked up. So introduce yourself to our listeners, and um, we'll just start asking some questions and going from there. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Isaac Joseph, and everyone knows me as Izzy. Um, yeah, everyone little, knows me love. as Izzy. Um, everybody else probably knows me from my former podcast, Filling the Tea About HIV. Um, but hello everybody, how's everybody doing? Yes, and if you have questions, um, give us a call at 281-318-8650. And we're talking about just anything. So, I mean, especially linkage to care, um, what is PrEP, how do you get an HIV test? Um, HIV is a human disease, it's not just for gay people. Yes. And so, we want to talk about that. Are you a heterosexual uh, male or female that... Um, is living with HIV and you would like to talk to us a little bit about your struggles, call us at 281-318-8650. Uh, so, Isaac, what, you know, what made you decide to become an activist? I, we talked a little bit about this, you know, how it was, this is the cool part to be the activist. You know, in 2019 is, is the, the, the cool time, yeah, you know, yeah. but back in the day, it wasn't the cool time. So, what made you decide that you needed to be 
active and out and, and say something about this? You know, um, activism wasn't, and being an advocate wasn't my first instant thought of go-to. I was one of those people who decided not to say anything, keep quiet, keep silent. My business is my business. And keep in mind, back in the day, wasn't too long ago because I've only been positive for about six, six years now. So six years ago, talking about your status and being an advocate wasn't the thing to do. Um, it finally came to a point where actually someone in me doing research um, actually for my book, uh, The Epidemic Living with HIV in the 21st Century, I was speaking with someone on the streets and the question was, if you had the option to find out that you were HIV positive, would you? And they kind of just pretty much said no. That they would not want to know anything about it. And from there, I found that there is a lack of education, especially within the African American community, um, especially right. amongst yes. the heterosexual African American yes. community. Yes. Um, you know, that's kind of what pushed me into it. And um, just like Josh said earlier when we were discussing that it was fight or flight for him, it was almost yeah. the same thing for me. It was fight or flight, and I chose to fight. <laughs> yeah, I chose to fight. I'm not. I'm not that person to go down silently. Okay, but you know, so being being an activist and growing up in that time. You know, you, um, you've been positive for, I'm sorry, how many years again? About, about six, six years. years. Since 2000, I was diagnosed in 2014. Okay. I had acquired the virus in 2012. Okay. So, so, did, so you knew already from 2012 that you were HIV positive or you didn't know? Um, or you maybe just suspected it? But when was... Go ahead. I knew. Um, I knew, suspected it, and all of the above. The first, this, it was suspicion, the uh, suspicion. Yeah. First it was that, and it was me not wanting to do anything about it. Finally, I did take a HIV test, the or oral quick home test, and that came back positive. And from there, I just was like, you know what? If I don't think about it, if I don't talk about it, it'll go away. Yeah. And it didn't. And in 2014, I found myself in the emergency room. Um, I found myself losing consciousness. I slipped into a coma, so to speak. Um, I was incoherent for about 24 hours. Uh -huh. um, my CD4 at the time was 94 and didn't know what was going on, but I knew in that instant before I slipped into that, yeah. little, that little mini coma, I told the doctor to run an HIV test. And they did, and that's how everything came about. Wow, um, that's funny that you told the doctor to run an HIV test, and that is not something that they just did automatically back then. Not in the, you know, not in the ER. In the ER, they rarely run um, any type of HIV test or anything like that. They'll tell you to go to your primary care doctor, and the doctor, in fact, did look at me and say, "We don't do that down here." And wow. I looked at her and I kind of grabbed her hands and I was like please just run the test and she did and wow from there they put me in the hospital <laughs> i guess after she ran the test she was like oh no he was serious you know so yeah. once they ran the test seeing my cd4 was 94 um seeing where everything was they put me in the hospital immediately i was there for probably about a week wow so yeah it was a, it was a time it was a struggle <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Um, so my my CD four count was was ten, and uh, my doctor was like, "You should really be in an ICU, or you should not be walking around." Yeah. You know, like something's wrong, but we'll get you medication, and you know that just went from there. And now a year later, I'm I'm where I'm at today, and I'm healthy, and I, I'm undetectable. I my CD four counts like almost 400, 3 something, 350, 3 something, but it's not 10, you know? Yeah. And so I, I feel much better. I had no energy back then. I was just, it was draining my life, you know? And so it was a, it was either, you know, fight or flight. It was either I was going to die then or 
I was gonna, you know, take charge of this and say, okay, I, I want to live. You know, maybe the, the back of my mind it was something that, you know, I don't know. But with you know, with all the struggles of staying into care, so now that I'm in care, I um, have panic attacks come that my medic if I'm like two or three days left my prescription and I have not had the pharmacy um, I haven't got the notification that my 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 medication is is ready to pick up mm -hmm. I go into like full pull you know full-blown panic attacks and I'm calling you know calling um, the doctor's office I'm calling the pharmacy find out like when like oh it's gonna be available like the, the day um, like Friday and I'm like oh Friday is the last day that I have medication so like if I don't get it Friday then that means I won't be able to pick it up until Monday and that means I'm, I'm out for like two or three days you know and you know and you know a lot of people um, and that's me no, like somewhat knowing the system so people who don't know the system it, it's it's incredibly hard a lot of people actually go through and deal with it I know it early on I was also that person I get down to seven pills and I'm like okay I gotta call the pharmacy the pharmacy doesn't it and this was before they had the app yeah you know keep yeah. in mind I'm, I, I know that we're in the 21st <laughs> yes. century and I'm saying before they had the app they did not have the app when I was diagnosed <laughs> so I had to call in to the pharmacy to play to get my medicine call in it takes them two days to get the message then takes them seven days to fill it. So yeah. I would panic when I got down to like six or seven pills. When they told me to call when I'm down to six or seven pills. So I would panic too and, and go into that. But now, sad to say, I just say, well, I'll get my medicine when I get my medicine. And it's, it, it's crazy. You don't want to have that thought or idea yeah. that that's what it is. I just have to time everything now. So now it's like all my doctor's appointments. It's something that, and it's something that people living with HIV learn. Timing is everything. Yes, yes. My doctor's appointments are strategically timed and mapped out. From me seeing the HIV doctor to my therapist, I go to the same clinic for everything. So everything is mapped and timed out. That way I know, okay, it's about time for me to get a new prescription refilled. I'm going to the doctor on this day. I got this amount of medicine left. So timing is everything, especially with, with when you're living with HIV, because it's it's no joke when when you run out of medicine. I, I kind of learned that the hard way some years ago when I moved to another state. That that's that's kind of difficult, you know. But and you know that's why I kind of want to talk about as well too, like you know linkage to care and and from. I, I, we were talking just a little bit, you know, saying, I was like, oh, Texas is a better, or Houston is a better um, city to kind of link into care. But then you're like, no, not really. Um, and then I was like, okay, yes, you are right. Yeah, it is. I mean, we are, we are progressing, but we're still not there, though. We're still, it still takes a minute for somebody to be able to link into care from yeah. day one. Yeah, you know, I say that because... I look at the timeline from my diagnosis to me getting into care. I was diagnosed in October of 2014. I didn't have my first doctor's appointment until December 2014. And then I didn't have, then I didn't get on medicine until February of the following year. So linking into care was, I found that quite difficult, especially with the state that I was in. I was lucky enough that when I went to um, St. Luke at the time uh, for my initial diagnosis, that they were able to get me started on the medication. So Thomas Street was just able to just follow up. But like I say, St. Luke only gave me 30 days of worth of medication. I still went two months without it. Um, two, actually three months without it because I didn't get medicine from Thomas Street until February. Yeah. So... Linking to care is, is something that's important. Um, it's even more important in, in, in smaller cities and other states such as Louisiana, Alabama, Georgia, um, a lot of the southern states that run along the Bible Belt. They have a very high rate of HIV that's going on in their community at that point. And 
it's really, really difficult for people to get into care. I learned that when I moved to Shreveport, how difficult getting into care was. Um, and it was crazy. It, it was really crazy. What do you think that it's it's so hard to get linked into care? I mean, so now that we know, I mean, we, we say it, once, you, once you're detectable, once you're finding out that you're positive, get into care. But then how do you get into care? You know, when there's no availability or there's the next appointments for six months and you're like, well, I don't have six months of medication left. And that's the thing. That question is, how do you get into care? That is the million dollar question that we all have when we first find out that we are HIV positive. Because while we're at the doctor, we go into that um, that tunnel vision. Yeah. As soon as we hear okay, well, you're HIV positive. That tunnel vision goes on and you don't pay attention to anything else. I know for a fact that I went completely blank. The doctor was talking to me and she sounded like um, old reference Charlie Brown, for y'all know who Charlie Brown is. <laughs> <laughs> they had this little uh, bird uh, uh, and uh, Snoopy on Charlie Brown and every time was like, wah, 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 wah. That's exactly yeah. what she sounded like, talking to me about what I needed to do after. So when I left the hospital, the key question was, okay, well, how do I get into care? The thing that helped me the most was knowing that I was in Houston um, at the time. And being in Houston, I was able to do a quick internet search. But it's not that easy for some people living in other states. Um, when I moved to Shreveport, um, I want to say that was 2016, Shreveport, Louisiana, I had the most difficult time getting into care. Um, I was waitlisted for six months uh, with the hospital, so I ended up having to go to a primary care physician that had a, no clue what to do, didn't know the medicines, didn't know how to treat someone with HIV, so we, I, taught, I pretty much taught them how to take care of me, Yeah, <laughs> which was kind of weird. That, that is weird. That's crazy. I taught, I taught the doctor how to take care of me in Shreveport and finally I got linked up with a um, place in Monroe, Louisiana which was two and a half hours away from where I live Wow! that yeah. wasn't able to take care of me. I'm like, well, I'm not going to drive two and a half hours mm. every month, you know, to the <laughs> no. that's not going to work. <laughs> no, no the, exactly. I mean, so, how, I mean, what kind of resources is out there for people? I mean, I know Ryan Wright is out there for every community that's mm -hmm. out there. So, you know, if you or HIV positive, go to your local Ryan White office or, or try to connect with the Ryan White. But other than that, like, what do you, what do you suggest for somebody who is thinking about moving to another state and is living with HIV positive? Have a plan. I didn't have a plan. You know, I just felt like I was going to get there. I felt that, and, and I know this is probably a twisted way of thinking. Um, I felt that I was going to Louisiana. Louisiana has a very high rate of HIV infection. Yeah. So as well as Texas. As well as Texas. So I felt like I would go to Louisiana, I would go to the doctor, tell them what's wrong with me, and I would get into care. That wasn't the case. So I would say have a plan before you're getting ready to move to any state, anywhere, even with any medical condition, you should have a plan as to who you're gonna see. Yeah. How are you gonna get into care? What type of what? What is the quality of care that they have? You know, I went to a point to where my CD4 was dropping, I, and I was I got really really scared because my CD4 hit the 200 mark while I was in Louisiana. Wow! And wow. that 200 mark, it, it, it gave me a little PTSD because I was having flashbacks yeah. of me being diagnosed at the CD4 of 94 and. That was kind of crazy, so I would say have a plan, and that plan should be a concrete plan. You should already be in communications with the doctors at least a month or two months before your scheduled move. For me, I just up and moved one day. I'm that type of person. I get tired <laughs> of the place, and I'm like, hmm, yeah. I think I'm going to move to such and such, and I'll pack up, and I'll be gone next week. <laughs> so, you, yeah, you most definitely have to have a plan. And so having the plan consists of finding out who your primary care physician is going to be, finding your pharmacy, 
fighting, um, seeing if you can qualify for insurance. Ryan what insurance. Insurance is important. Um, here in Houston, we have the Harris Health Gold Card, yeah. which is great for, for people who have no insurance. But in other states, they do have the Medicaid for All plan. In Louisiana, I know for sure that you can go to Louisiana if you don't make a certain amount of money. You can get the uh, Meta Medicare. Um, you can get Medicaid. That. Yeah, Medicaid. There we go. Medicare is for six five and up. <laughs> yep. But you can get Medicare and um, well Medicaid, and um, you can get that for sure. In states like Louisiana, Mississippi, they do have those Medicaid for all. Um, plans there, but insurance is the most important thing. You show up anywhere without it, you will be turned away, and it's and it's sad that it's that, but it happens. It happens. We have salads today. Today, yeah. today is salad day. Uh, salad day. We just want to welcome our co-host, Lady Hell, and <laughs> it's okay. And Mr. Hell and the baby, that's, that's the baby I was telling you about. Yes, I told you I was going to take care of this child as soon as it came in. But uh, with Project Reddit, you know, I was just so impressed that you created this um, network or this, this, this link that people can go to and learn about, not only about HIV, but you have the HIV 101, which includes prep, mm -hmm. you know, the pre-exposed prophylaxis, and includes, you know, what to do with it. Now we have Travada, and we have um, Discovy that is approved. And, you know, but I just found out that the SCOBY is not approved for females at the moment. No, it is not. Um, and that's a whole scientific thing that, that I couldn't get into. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. I'm not a scientist, but no, it is not approved for females. It has something to do with the um, trans, the, the transmission rate from male to, from, from uh, child to, uh, from mother to child transmission. Um, it has something to do with that. But... So, um, but is it because they would be in, in case they become pregnant? I mean, is that is, is that it? Is it's that, in case that yeah, it's in case that they become pregnant. Here's the thing about it wouldn't the, they would still be able to contract HIV. They would, yeah, so. they will still be because here's the thing about Descovy. Descovy is a much smaller dosage of um, I want to say it's intramecin. I can't. I'm not gonna. Don't quote me on uh, on names of these. But yeah. <laughs> but it's a very low dosage of Truvada. My best friend in there, Ray Hill. <laughs> I love Ray. There's a story in there for African American men. Oh, okay. Um, for teenagers. Yeah. For there's a in in that book, so you're not leaving story, anybody I'm out. Not leaving anybody I love out. it. Love it. There's a story for everyone. And yes. each of those stories that I wrote, they're real life stories. Yes. Names may have changed. Yeah. But Locations may have changed. <laughs> but these are stories that. I actually got from people, and one of the main stories that um, I, I, I always talk about is the story of the 15-year-old boy that I met mm. uh, when I was in Louisiana. Oh, uh, 15 years 15. old. 15. When I was in Louisiana. But um, kids don't have, don't have, don't, don't, teenagers don't get HIV. Yeah, teenagers, yeah. Teenagers they don't, don't, get don't, they don't have teenagers. Mm -mm. I Children was either. living they don't in get Louisiana, uh, and I was trying to get into care, mm -hmm. and there was a place in Louisiana um, not to be com confused with the Montreux Center, mm -hmm. that's yeah. here. They're right. actually called the Montreux Center. Oh, okay. So, um, not to be confused with that, with the one that's here. Mm -hmm. But, they, I was there trying to get into care, trying to find out what do I need to do to get into care here in Louisiana. Yes, 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 yes. And I was sitting and this young man walked in. And, you know, sometimes it's hard to tell a teenager from a 20-year-old. Yes, true. But I could look at this kid's face, and I could tell that he was no more than 15. A child. And he was a child. He came in upset, nervous. Then I'm like, okay, well, my heart of heart said, let me ask them what's, what's wrong. <clears throat> and he started to explain to me what had been happening to him and what was going on. Yeah. And that... The school nurse told him to come to this place. Mm. And he did. But he didn't know what to he do. He didn't know why, what he to do, what, what's going on. What to do. And the first thing I had to did you talk to your mother? Did you talk to you? Had you talked to your your parents? Someone, yeah. Someone. No, he was scared his mom was going to put him out and 
do all of these. The story gets real interesting towards the end because I decided to take this kid up under my up under myself and to walk him through anything. I got him into quick into care quicker than I got myself into care. <laughs> you laugh you know, and you have oh, somebody right. up in there. I got I felt then like, you still I felt like I had time, you know. I said he ain't got no time to waste. <laughs> and eventually I got him to talk to his mother. Good. Come to find out. His mother had been living with HIV for see? since he was born. But see nobody but, talked oh, about no it. Way. No way. No one talks about That's it. That's it. And Nobody talks about always, it. HIV is always a twofold when you are in places in the South. Yes. She grew up in a generation where she ain't say nothing about it. She she took her AZT. And nobody told her about it. Time, that's what it was. She took her AZT. She took the medicine to make sure that her child did not become infected. You know, and she moved on with her life. And didn't talk about and it. And didn't say a word. Mm. And, and it impacted him, her son. And it, it ended up, and HIV ended up impacting her child a whole generation later. And that could have been prevented. And Only if somebody been, would have sat somebody down somebody and had a conversation. Something. But in the early 90s, it yes. was still a hush thing. In the early 2000s, when the minority changed from uh, gay white men Male, to gay yeah. black men and to heterosexual African American women. women. It went on the hush. You know, black people, we have this um, this complex. We, we push everything. Take on the rug. <laughs> you know, Keisha got pregnant at, at 14. We're going to put the rug. We're going to send her out of town. Gonna, mama going to raise the baby. Yeah, we're going to send her out of town and come that's, back. And this her cousin. You know how we yeah, do crazy that's stuff. That's what we do. And it's, it's sad because the, 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 the book in general has a lot of topics that African Americans can relate to. And it's I agree with you because we had a guy at our church. He had HIV and nobody would ever say something about it but when he passed away, guess what they say? He died of pneumonia. I'm like, how is that helping the teenagers? How is that helping them? You We're know, not helping them. Don't say that. I mean, that's the family talk. Oh, he died of pneumonia. No, he did not. And it's that was crazy. some of it. But who did we help? And it's crazy because I always tell people, I, I've had several friends that have passed mm -hmm. age-related illnesses mm -hmm. in the past years. Mm -hmm. One of my closest friends, um, I knew what he had, what he had passed. Right, through. right. His family did not want to make it. That's anything. it. They don't want to say Love nothing about it. At him. all. When I went to see him in the hospital, I instantly knew. Me being someone that's in the medical field. I you know, knew. I know, what, I knew what it looks like. Yes, I know what it, it looks like, too. Like yes. Me. So when I saw him, I was like, okay, well, we have to do something about this. No, we family. didn't say no. Nope. Didn't want to do anything. That's what this, you're right. Um, according, he died, of course, he died of, uh, of pneumonia. Yes. And Everybody black, and, you died of pneumonia. And I come to find out that he is, we give everything. Everybody's and I'm pneumonia. I was telling Josh about, my, uh, about an aunt of mine who passed through age related illness. Mm hmm. During the time, my mom kept saying she died of pneumonia. It wasn't until my mama actually told me what it was. Right. That, you know, that, that was going on. So, but what if you would talk about it and let them know it could be somebody else in the family that may need to hear what was going on? I hear this. I had a cousin about a year ago passed of pneumonia. Pneumonia. And come to find out, she was uh, HIV positive um, and had been living with AIDS for quite some time and she was not in care. She wow. was not in treatment. And so had she been in treatment and care, just to say she could have been still living today. Yeah, a and, possibility. And, and, and I, I kind of felt bad for myself because I'm like, here I am you know, living with HIV and I have a cousin, someone who's close, close to, to you. Me, you know, dealing with this issue now, granted she's Two generations older than I am. But still, the knowledge but, and the experience you have. The medicines that we have today, she could have been here for two more generations. Yes. You know, even out of Because I hear Josh say it's people living longer with the HIV, with the medicine. Yeah, I'm sorry. I want to, I want to say, like, you know, why do you think now it's, you know, our black and, blonde, black and brown and women and people of color are now being more, um, or, or, or the, the tests of them are becoming more effective, you know, like, they're the highest population now. Why is it all of a sudden, like, that the tests are out, you know, we have this preventative care, but yet it's, 
you know, African American women are on the rise for new HIV diagnosis. Yeah, exactly. How because do you? What do you? How do you see that coalition? Because we don't talk about it, as I said. And I think, well, some of the women that I have talked to, or whatever, men on the down low, don't want to live up to their own truth. I'm like, you're gonna have to live. I would rather live up into my own truth instead of live a lie. Public service announcement. <laughs> If you are a African American man, yes, and you are living on the DL, come on now. It is 2019, and it's okay. and we finna go to 2020. It's going into 2020, and it is Stop okay. Stop the madness. To live in your truth, trust live me. Live in your own truth. Trust me. Because you're hurting a lot of people, not only in, in the DL, but if you are sharing needles or if yes, you're sharing yes. needles, you know it's. Live in your live, live in, in your, your truth, truth, whatever it may be, because you can save your life and other and people's lives. Else. Yes, you know and heartaches and all of that. It it, it oh, as an African American sorry. male, it hurts my heart. Yes, I see so many African American women being diagnosed with HIV because I already know in you my know. Life, I was like. That, that, that you know, <laughs> well, I don't know where you I know. got it from, but sit down with me. Let me tell you, you where you, 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 know you got it from. I've had, and I've had several friends mm -hmm. that I've had to talk to, you know, and I always say, You can't, you can't okay, make on. a woman feel a way about it. Yes, if she don't already, if she don't want to feel that, that's right. Ain't nothing and you can do. If she has all the heel about that, man, you, can say. you know what you got to do. You gotta sit down and let it play out. You know. Just and then sometimes you get mad at you. Yeah. So it's sometimes I'm like, well, when do you say something? When you you don't say something, but just leave it alone. What and do you then, think? I leave, at this point in time, you know, <laughs> being 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 a, being, being a uh, professional GBF gay best friend, and you know what's going and, on. And when I have an inkling, or when somebody then tried to say something to me or talk to me. I put them in their place. Yes. And then I don't say nothing to my friends no more because I don't want to be yelled at. Yes. You know, for trying to for trying to say trying to help you. You know, but it hurts my heart. That's why I always say, you know, in, in the book there's a story about a man on on, on the DL living your truth. You live it's, your it's truth. It's okay. It's okay to to do you. If that's what you like, that's what you like. But that DL culture all comes back to. Our and stigma to it in our ear, in our community, the and the stigma and that sweeping under the rug mentality that oh, we have. You know, um, I find today that heterosexual men are mm -hmm. being more infected, mm -hmm. um, and, and and I can only find this is not something that the CDC has proven. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is something myself has seen. Yes, when I go to Thomas Street, mm -hmm. not every three months. Yes, when I just go up there to pick up medicine. You know, gaydar goes like this. You know when someone's yes. you can you can tell you can tell. You know, I hate I always hate saying like, like you can tell when someone's this. You really can't. But, but it, sometimes but, <laughs> but you can't tell. I can. You know. <laughs> you know. I tell my mom all the time, she always say, oh, yeah, I can tell he'll say, Mom, you can't tell nothing. You know, Bobby got five kids and come on now. Mamas. He he just walked with a switch. That's come on now. Time. But when I'm at Tom Street, I sit I'm I'm that I'm an observer. Yes. So mm -hmm. I, I, I look around the room. Mm -hmm. I'm that person that walks around the clinic while I'm waiting on my medicine, being nosy, <laughs> and like, seeing what's going what's on. What's going on? You know, they might be working on a miracle cure on the fifth floor huh. that I don't know about. Because huh. <laughs> I'm sure going to be on the fifth floor. Right. I'm, I'm sure enough going to find out about I know that's right. I'm going to be the first one in the program. Call, call me the Nancy Drew. Oh, yes, come on now. Nancy Drew. But, uh, I know that's right. But, it, but I, it, I, I look around the room and I, and I feel the room. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when I'm it's in that room, I see like, a lot of heterosexual men, mm -hmm. and I see a lot of heterosexual women. Yes, they be the main ones in the admissions, finding out that they're newly diagnosed. Now, when mm -hmm. it comes down to those heterosexual men, mm -hmm. you kind of got to be nosy and talk to them. To figure yes, out, what's going on? Is this a down low situation, or is this a I slept with every girl in the neighborhood. And don't know and, where it come from. <laughs> and didn't know where it come from. Yeah. I have found that it's been, I slept with every girl in the neighborhood. Yeah. And don't know where it's coming from. You know, Fifth Ward. And that's Ward, a possibility. Fifth Ward has a high HIV rate. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. You know, when we talk about city and the city and the demographics, yes. Yes. the city, yes. Fifth Ward has a high HIV infection rate of African American women, as well as the third. And we don't even talk about that. And no one talks about. Yes. That. There are no. Uh, I can think of one organization that's doing something about it, but it's more so geared to HIV positive men. Oh, you know, okay. no one is, is 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 doing something about the HIV positive women that are in the city, and that's you know that's the next campaign that needs yes. to be, that, that needs to be worked on, so we can talk to our black and brown and even our Caucasian, yes. you know, sisters, yes. you know that this is something that's happening to you all, yes, you know, the down low epidemic has put that number at an all time high. And a, a, a woman today is more than likely to be diagnosed with HIV just as a gay African American male. Mm. So those numbers are no longer different, you know. And that's something that we need to do something about. We can't sit idly by. Right, just, right, right. And just wait. You know? So in your experience and your expertise, what do you suggest that the main thing that we can start coming up just because there's people out there that's listening like you say in this other group that may not know uh haven't been informed so what do you suggest say for instance like me that's starting from the beginning learning more what would you suggest that i could tell other people to help them the first thing that i would suggest is information information look it up Okay. Get the facts first. Yes. Because once I, I feel that when people see something in in truth, yes, they are uh, they're more acceptable. Acceptable. For, yes. They're more prevalent to do something about it. Yes. Yes. You know, they're more willing to do something about the truth. Yes. You know, the second thing I would say is people have to start speaking up. A part of the reason why I decided to speak out the way that yes, I do yes, now is yes. because. People have to start speaking. I felt like someone needed to say anything, say something. Yes. You know, and when I started speaking, I was speaking to my peers. Yes. I was speaking to those kids who, I, I always tell people, I, I grew up, I, I was born 1990, mm -hmm. you know, and I tell people all the time, I'm that last generation of common sense yes. because I know how to use a rotary dial phone Come and on a now. cell phone. <laughs> that other group don't have a clue what that they is. They don't have a, a clue. clue. I know how to use an encyclopedia Come on and now. a Wikipedia. Yes. You know? yes. Oh, they don't have a clue what you're talking you know, about. Yes, you know, I'm, probably, I'm probably so, it's an encyclopedia. Are the card catalog at the library? Look, or do they still look, have that? Look, look, do they still have that? Yeah. I just, just the funniest low key. My mother just put up all the encyclopedias that I had as a kid. All those she said, break them back out. And I said, yeah. well, I'm, what you doing putting them up? Them got some good information. Sure do. The you truth know. information. Yeah. Not so, fake news, huh? <laughs> I, I tell people, you know, I was talking to my generation. Yes. We were in school. No one talked to us about HIV. No, they did. Sex, yeah. sex ed was a bird course. Sex ed was the course that all the seniors took. Yes. To not go to class. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and, but no, uh, it's not, even, it's not even sex ed anymore. Yeah, no. and it was always read by the head football coach. Yes. That didn't yes. care what the seniors did. He didn't care. Them, as Don't bother they him. Ball, did not bother I'll him. bring him some food. You good. Yeah. <laughs> I brought that man Starbucks. I know that's he right. Was, and you got a good age. Yeah. That's why I'm in Starbucks every single morning. See? And I never had a first or second period. See? Okay. Come on now. <laughs> that's how it worked. <laughs> you know, that's the gym, that's that's who I was talking to. Yes. You know, um, I don't even know what they call us because we're not millennials. We're, we're not generation. Y'all in between. We, 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 we. we, we Y'all just out there. Yeah, we just out there. We are, very, we are a very special group. population of yes. a group. But we're also a population that, are, that we're seeing being more and more infected yes. with HIV than any other. And now, um, I was reading an article um, just the other day about how Millennials have very high stigmas against people with HIV. Mm. You know, they hear all this different stuff. And didn't get the correct but information. But they getting the correct information. And I'm like, well, this is 2019. You know, we're living and in we're still giving people our people wrong people. information. We got all these commercials on, on television and people just because YouTube you and all this stuff. On TV. 
it, you see, because once upon a time, I ain't seen no HIV commercials talking about medicine on TV mm -hmm. when I was growing up. You're seeing it now because it's a problem, you know. So that means you have to go out there and actively get this information yourself. Yes. Because you know? it's not something that they're just talking about. We're seeing more and more. I, I, I say HIV is becoming the cool thing, apparently, because... We're seeing athletes that are yes, yes, yes. diagnosed HIV positive. Uh, other celebrities, I was just reading an article about an athlete, a football player, a uh, football and soccer in other areas, <laughs> mm -hmm. about a, a soccer player um, in Australia mm -hmm. being forced to come out. Forced. Mm -hmm. uh, forced to come out and being HIV positive, or he wasn't going to be allowed to play anymore. Wow. And, you know, I was like, well, y'all... Well, that's this, not the right way to do it. You know, y'all gonna it. take this whole man career away just because he's, you know, don't want to speak. But isn't it, would that be a part of the HIPAA law where he does not have to expose that well, to I his... Mean, HIPAA is here in the United States. That was well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. You know, here, I ain't got to tell you nothing. nothing. You know, I can, I can, I could choose to live in silent, yes. and a lot of people do, yes. and not say anything. Yes. The reason we have a lot of advocates and activists out there mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. is because, for one, the numbers are too high. Yes. They're higher than what the CDC knows. See, we know it because we're in the community. You're in the field out there. We see it, and as much as I want to force people to go into care, you can I yeah. can only give you the information, and with that, you can choose to do whatever you, what choose, you to choose to do. Choose to do with it. But now, if if testing becomes easier, if getting on medication becomes easier, if getting access to prep becomes easier, then I think a lot of more people will be like, okay, it's not as hard. I feel like I I feel that's an excuse that a lot of people use. It's hard to get into care. It's hard to mm. link up with the doctor. Yeah. I don't know where I'm going to go. I don't want to go to Thomas Street. I don't want to go to the Legacy. I don't want to go... It's hard you know. to have that conversation. Could that be excuses? Oh, yes. And it's all know, excuses. It, yeah, and you know, and those, to me, those are some some of the excuses that people say because in reality, it's harder to have that initial conversation. conversation. Saying, you know, and that's why I want to say, you know, if you're out there and you have not gotten an HIV test, I don't care who you are. Yes. If you have not gotten an HIV test, go get one. And if you are sexually active, get on PrEP. You know, you do not want to get this disease. Until there's a cure or until there's a vaccine for it, that they're coming out, they're working on it at the moment, but okay. it's not up there yet. You know, so instead of waiting be proactive about it go get yes, into the yes. go link into care mm -hmm. it is it is a little bit complicated you do have to navigate the system and then once you're in care you have to stay in care which means calling your doctor yes. filling your prescriptions and um, knowing when you're going to be out of a, out of medication knowing you're going to travel for 10 days i mean it happened to me i wasn't no i i was traveling to oh, mm -hmm. i was traveling you know uh, out of out of state. Yes. And I didn't have any medication. Oh, God. And, you know, the crazy thing that, 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 I, that I like to, like I said, that initial <laughs> conversation is hard. Yes. And, but you, like I said, like I said earlier, you have power over your own destiny. So, you have to figure out what you're going to do. Yes. For yeah. yourself, you know. And I know that it's hard. Yes. And I know, I, I went two years with that, I'm not going to do anything about it. Maybe it'll just go away mentality. Mm -hmm. And I only made things worse, worse for yourself. For myself, you know. And yes, testing is easier. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's easier to get on medication and, and to become undetectable. But the hard thing to do is to look yourself in the mirror and say, this is what I need to do for myself. Yes. If you're sexually active, it's okay. You know, live free. You know, I always tell people to me, sex is about liberation. It's a freedom. You know, some people have different views, you know. But for some people, sex is a freedom. Especially in what I find in the in the gay community, sex is about me making a choice for myself. This is what I want to do. You know, now being gay is not a choice, but yeah. what you do after that... <laughs> Is your choice. That's your choice. Who you sleep with is your choice. Yes. If you want to sleep with 
two, or twenty. That's all your choice. But there are ways you can. There are things that you can do to, to prevent and to be safe. You know, and I, I don't. And I want to put this out there: prep is not a prevention <laughs> tool, or it's not an excuse to say I'm on prep. Let's just go with it. Now. I heard somebody. Uh, me and my you know, husband was listening to. Remember that day we was listening to that man? Yes. And he was saying, um, I could do what I want to do. I can hire, up. I'm on prep. I'm like, I don't think that's right. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, 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 and about a month ago, I had a real big issue. Two months ago, I had a real big thing on Facebook mm -hmm. about um, the topic of prep. And I said that I felt that prep is being used by a lot of gay men, especially mm -hmm. young gay men, mm -hmm. as a reason to not use condoms. That's what he said. And prep only prevents I know they may say it pretty fast at the end of it. I know, they, 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 yeah. But prep is only used to prevent your chance. Actually, they don't say it fast. They say it moderately slow. <laughs> yeah. You know, so they want to make it clear. Prep yes. is used to prevent your chances of getting Speak HIV. Speak to the mic a little bit so they can hear you. To prevent yes. your chances of getting HIV and not other STDs. Condoms are still 99.9% .9 effective when it comes to other STDs. Such as gonorrhea, yes, amelia, syphilis, syphilis, yes, syphilis, which is something that is very prevalent because most people who are diagnosed with HIV today are doing the diagnosis with syphilis as well. Mm. So, you know, we're already out here wild and out. Don't get on prep and, and wild out even more. So you saying with the prep, make sure you still use the condom with prep. Make sure you still use a condom. Okay, use got it. Use two of them if you have to. You know, I seen them at I seen them at Family Dollar, y'all. That was Family Dollar had a had a had a <laughs> three pack for two dollars and fifty okay. cents. Oh, you can get them free at the clinic, can't you? you? Get, or you can get them free at the That's clinic. Right. But for those of us who don't. Who don't want those? Oh, okay. Them lifestyles. All right. Uh -huh. <laughs> For those of us who don't want those, I'm telling you, they are not. They are not as expensive as they as used you to think. Be. You know, remember Walmart used to go to get a box for fourteen yes. dollars. It ain't fourteen dollars no more. It's half that. <laughs> and then there's a lot of organizations that mm -hmm. will give you, if you like, call. They will give you, you know, yeah, just for yeah, free. for free. So you it's know? no excuse. It, it it is no excuse. And you know, that's one thing you asked earlier. What can we do mm -hmm. to cut down this number? Yes. But you know what else? You, what what they can start back doing mm -hmm. is going back out on these streets. Yes, I remember that. Yes. You know, I remember because, you know, like I say, I'm from that last year. Yes. Sense. <laughs> yes, um, come on now. You know, I know what DSL is. I remember waiting on, I remember waiting on that AOL pad. Come on now. Yes, yes. $3,600 on the about two weeks. I remember okay. doing that. Yes. But going back out there and getting in that community. Putting the street workers back out there. Them, yeah, and yeah. And when we say street workers, we ain't talking about that kind talking of street about worker. Kind of street worker. Yeah, we we're talking, talking about, about the ones, education. We're the, talking about the ones that's helping those. Yes. Workers, you know, <laughs> not that kind. You know, and, and there's nothing wrong with, no. with, 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 with what people want to do. With yes. Life. But, you know, we have to get out there. And if we're going to do something, we have to act. So the way. funding for that was cut. Uh, was that what it was? Or no, they no, went a different the direction? The funding wasn't cut. It just went a different direction, like we were talking earlier yeah. about uh, one of the things that I find useless is being outside of a club, mm -hmm. gay or yeah. straight, yes. trying to administer an HIV test. I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's a club that was on that's on sophomore, not sophomore, um, on Almeda. Mm -hmm. They used mm -hmm. to have it, uh, and, and it's a uh, quote unquote straight club. That I have a mobile STD. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm quoting yeah. quote unquote. Mobile STD um, Clint, um, the, the trailer. Yes. And then we had the club 2020. Yes. To sit outside of there. And, you know, I find that useless. Yeah. Because if I'm going to a club. I'm sure not coming over to the trailer. I'm going to the club. Not I'm to not, the trailer. I'm, I'm so not trying to get tested. I'm not trying and to get tested. And I don't want nobody to see me going exactly. to get tested. You know, now if you pass and not drink tickets, I might. Yeah. You know. Some kind of incentive. At the same time, 
I don't want to find out that I'm HIV positive. And I'm on my way into the club. Yeah. Into the club. And I had plans for the next, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I don't want you to ruin my plans. We get yeah, that's the thing. You really, I don't, I don't need all of that. You know. And so then it could be another situation. Think this will be the best. Yes. Use for because I, I, I want to be able to start doing testing with positive impact. I want to I want to be able to reach out to like our homeless community because I do know our homeless community is affected. Yeah. But at the same time. We, when we talk about it, we also say, okay, we want them to be undetectable. Well, how are you going to stay in care? Where are you going to yes. get your medications? How are you yeah. going to hold your medications? How are you going to take your medication? Is, you know, like, yet we were talking about the same time every day, and a homeless will person. will steal their medication. They have, yes. they have uh, what they call the, uh, the, I call it the medication underground railroad. Oh, no. It's a pipeline that they'll send money medications to a different country. But I mean, people out there stealing medication, making three four hundred dollars off of one bottle of HIV medication. This there's HIV has we got we have our own secret mm. trade going on. Wow. But people who can't get into care, mm. they out here selling and selling the medications on the streets as mm. well now. So you know, so there's a pipeline to everything and, and what you think you want them to start testing yes. and, and things like that here the main thing is to do is to actively get out there you you know just make a start somewhere just, just to in, in the community just, just go get one out, yeah. get out there in the community the people will come remember when we had the grand opening they had yeah. the hiv testing yeah. there the people will come i remember um one time a, a, a for a fundraiser i just had the hiv test mm -hmm, set up mm -hmm. At the corner of Cullen and uh, Reed, right there. Cullen and Reed Road. Yeah, right now, there. I know you about the um, it's at the uh, I think it's the Ace uh, Cash. Cash in there. It's a uh, yeah. uh, church's chicken across yeah. the street. Uh -huh. uh huh. I set up right there, and I did testing, and the people came. Now the people, now the people did come because I was offering an incentive, a ten dollar gift card. That's good. Know, which is good, you know. But still, I still got a lot of people that came. Because they wanted to, to know, know plus the ten dollar gift plus card, the $10 right, right. Was the perk, but at least the ten dollars might ease your pain. <laughs> yes. Yeah, if yeah. anything comes up. But the hardest thing to do after the point of doing testing it's is getting people into care. to get and in the care to get to the next step. Once you do the testing, you have to do a follow up. Yeah, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't do this. See, the, the thing is with the mobile testing. And uh, test you just get the information. You just you get know. the information and your diagnosis. So, do you give them uh, a list of places they could go for you aftercare? Them, but that's totally up to them. To go for aftercare, but it's totally up to them because that aftercare, you have to. They have to call and get that appointment in because they still have to be tested again. And it might not have seen. You know, even though you just gave me my diagnosis. I wonder if he was, I don't think this is right. You know how you, your mind will be going back? Yes. <laughs> it's you know, like, uh-uh, I'm going to wait. This say, might not be right. Two years that I spent, the first time I said, okay, no, nah, this ain't right. That's what I'm saying. And when I took the test for myself, I took an oral quick home uh -huh, test. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And when I took that test for myself and it came back positive, what did I you was say? like, no, nah, nah, that ain't wrong. wrong. <laughs> that's that's wrong. I they all wrong. I think I was eighty or eighty or ninety dollars on one day getting these oral quick tests. From and you had the room. answer from the beginning. And I had the answer from the beginning, and I just said you, you just assume that one of these tests is going to come up negative. If the cold goes away, yeah. If my <laughs> symptoms goes away, I am. A and if my sinus go away, and yeah. if yes. I'm not tired or stressed out. <laughs> you know, I was still working. I was getting up going to work every single day. Yes. I, and, and, and I put myself into overdrive. Yes. I was like, if I could do all of this, yeah, ain't nothing wrong, wrong with me. I'm Superman. <laughs> I know that's right. You know, I, I'm good. But, but that's what I'm saying. That would be the first thing as soon as they find out. So how do you suggest, I know by you saying the incident, especially within our community, how can we we begin to have that talk and even if we especially we can forget about trying to go into the churches you know to do <laughs> you know um wheeler baptist avenue has yes a great pastor HIV. kobe they yes great cross beach program for HIV. and they told me pastor decker over there at greenhouse pastor internet decker, yes he, uh, he also has a, he does he also has a great program 
for HIV, and there's also a place by the name of a caring, safe place. Mm -hmm. It's a sober living home. Okay. Um, for uh, men who are living with HIV, gay and straight. Um, I knew about it because I lived there. Okay. <laughs> and, and at one point, um, you know, sobriety is something that we struggle with yeah. in the HIV community mm -hmm. for a lot of people. So. There are a lot of good organizations that are tied to the church. Yes. The thing is, today in the political climate that we have, mm -hmm. there are some churches that are not with it. Um, I actually had a uh, church, a, a meeting with the church, and I wanted to do an HIV yes, program. Yes, yes. And it was within my community. Yes. And basically, the pastor said to me in so many words, if we got behind HIV, we would have to advocate for homosexuality. And wow. it bothered me because mm. I was like, well, that's not true. And I tried my best to explain About the women and the HIV children. HIV is not just For gay, gay men. Yeah. It's heterosexual. He must have got the update on it's, the, it's children. the statistics. And, and I believe he had the update. <laughs> he just didn't want to see it. I that he just didn't want to see it. Exactly. Okay. And that still in his mind like i said earlier you can't change someone yes i can alter your perception but that's not going to change going to. but in his head he starts he's still just saying that he had an hiv outreach program he would have to deal with a lot of gay men now granted I, and brentwood also has a good hiv um, outreach mm -hmm, program mm -hmm. as well now granted i always feel like well something else got to be going on with this pastor that he don't want to. He don't want to live in this yeah. street. Huh. <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> but we'll you know, see a video okay. pop up about him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, another day. Yeah, because <laughs> so, I know that all the ones that say no, they be hard on it this way. There's a video gonna pop up with you, yeah. and then what you gonna say? And all these folks gonna come up. Oh, now I see. So you know, but I, I've had those instances. That's why I pretty much put myself on that place of if I'm gonna do this outreach thing. If I'm going to do this advocacy thing, I just have to do it. And I just have to go into it with the mindset of I'm going to make a difference one way or the other. So what would you think of like a successful place? I know you did it on a call on Cullen and Reed Road. Say, for instance, he want to do something with Paz Impact. Where would you suggest we start a, a location or place? What would we do? Yeah, speak some truth to us. Yeah, because you know, we need we, we, we say, know. Because I, I get I tired was, of the clubs, you know. I, I I'm not a, I'm not a club person, so I can totally you know, see that is clubs, not you know is not the right place. Some people, like I say, if they give them out an incentive, they'll go to the clubs. But I always say find those areas that are really being affected. Fifth like Fifth Ward, Third Ward, yeah. Sunnyside, yeah. South Park. Yes. yes, all these areas may not sound Could like. Could we do the something like the multi service is. center? Yes, you can go to the. Yeah, you can go to uh, the. If you, if you don't feel that you setting up a booth, yeah, outside on 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 the on the on street the it is what you want to do. Do it at a multi service yes. center. Sunnyside Center, um, Acres Home, Acres Home, Home Village, Village, um, Harm Clark Multi Service yes. Center. Yes, yes, um, you know. Do it at a place like that and get the word out. Mm -hmm. The thing is, when you're on a street corner, you got passerby. Right, got right, right, home, right. And you got people walking at a stop. Right. And, you know. And the multi-service centers, yes. But the multi-service center is also a great route to go. Yes. You know, you just have to make sure you get the word out that this is what's happening that day. Yeah. And as much as I hate to say it, Having an incentive. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, especially with us. If it ain't nothing like, for free, we ain't coming. There's, um, there's uh, like the dog, you know, um, spay neuter program. Yeah. Because there'd be a line, you know, <laughs> from here to anywhere. Like, hey, you want to get an HIV test while you're here waiting for your, your dog to get oh, neutered or, or spayed? <laughs> having an incentive <laughs> works. You know, well, you know the, the first time that I ever did it, tomorrow, I didn't have an incentive. Tomorrow. Yeah. And I proved that I wasted my time. Yeah. <laughs> but after that, I learned that I'm going to do this, you know, having the sense of help. If you want people to come out, if people want to talk to you, you know, have people talk. Have an incentive. You got to, nobody ain't going to do nothing for free here. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, I, I, I just you know I I know I want to do something. I just don't know how to do it. And you know, to and where to where to even start? I know that there's a huge need for 
somebody just to go out there and say, hey, we're offering free HIV testing, and here, mm -hmm. you know, we'll give you a $10 gift card, or here, we'll, we'll do this for you. Uh, I'm trying to look, we'll see what kind of time we have. Um, yeah, I'll have a little bit of time, yeah. Uh, but we're, we're, we're almost done. Um, but I, I, I want to be able to do something more than just the radio show. I, this the radio show is good. I can I can talk to politicians. I can talk to you. I have a platform now. Mm -hmm. But this platform does me no good if I can't reach the people who will really yes. need it. Yes, yes. You know, the people who really need it are not yes. listening to my show at the moment. Yes. You know, the people who really need it are closeted. They're not they're not researching anything about HIV, so they're not going to see. And any most of those people are not listening to your show. Yeah. yeah no, so like yeah, yeah they not or, even or listen. any of show regarding right. HIV. A lot of you know? times. With what I do on Facebook when I post videos, I find myself speaking to the HIV community, mm -hmm. and I'm like, that's not the community yeah. that I need yeah. to be speaking to. I want to be reaching, you uh, know. At, yeah. With Facebook, the greatest thing that I can say with Facebook, they have all these different Facebook groups that you can get in. So yeah. I'm, I'm a part of a whole bunch of different groups that I post videos in there as well. But finding that target community. It's probably the hardest thing yeah. when you're getting out there to do testing. You know, that's probably the hardest thing. But you have to go to the areas where you know the street workers are. Yeah. In Sinet. Yes. Oh, yes. come on now. Yes. Oh, yes. Jensen and Phil Ward. 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 Jensen Go there, and you establish yourself as someone who's trying to help the and trustworthy. Home and trustworthy. They are help you. Look out for you, just like you looking out for the people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe that. No, thank you so much for joining yes. us. Yes. Uh, I just, you know, since we're talking about Thomas Street a little bit, I just want to give a little quick shout out to everybody. Yes. Um, today was our tour, or tomorrow's our toy drive. Tomorrow, I'm like, wait a minute, I didn't miss it. Yeah, today was the day we, we, we picked up the toys. <laughs> so we picked up the toys from Tony's Corner Pocket. Yeah. We picked up the toys from Reba's um, Italian restaurant. Yeah. And then also AT&T came in and brought us some toys. And so we have a ton of toys, but tomorrow's our giveaway for... Um, What's the time? From, it starts at 10 until 2. All right, that's what I told Mr. Yes, Hall. it's from 10 and to 2. And then we want to thank my other, my major sponsors, Build the Bear. Yes, yes. Giving away our Build the Bear. You saw them the other night. Those are some nice, they Very are $75 nice. a piece. Very nice, but they didn't give me the clothes. <laughs> oh yes, and you know, then calls do. for yes. their other toys that they gave us also, and we will be giving away school supplies also too tomorrow. You know, and so just a quick shout out to all the board members who are there. I'm actually now on the board, I'm on the advisory board for Thomas Street, and I see, Yay. I see a lot I'll of things. I, I got off. You got off. I know, and and I'm and I I kind of missed you because I think I got on when when a lot of people got off the board, like Tana got off the board. Um, everybody else, she comes in every now and then, but it's it's, it's hard for people you to stay what? on, we, you know. What, but there's no the fresh. Needed was, they needed fresh ideas. Yes. So yes. For for a lot of the old heads who went ahead and decided to concede their seats. Yes. Yes. You know, they need fresh ideas. Yes. yes. We're fine. We know how we we know the ends and outs. Yes. And yes. Yes. And what we need to do. Um, Correct. But. We have a whole generation of that people that know. are coming to the clinic now that just they didn't know the struggle before. Yeah, did not know. They, they didn't know, so they need fresh ideas. They need, right. they need fresh things, especially at pharmacy. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, trust me. I, 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 even on the board, I still complain about that pharmacy and about lab, and you know, all. And I was frustrated a little bit, and I was talking to Tana, and I was just like, you know, I'm just frustrated with Thomas Street. You know, like honestly, mm -hmm. like there are I, I'm. Being, they're not doing my well-being because I'm being stressed out whenever I come here. And she's like, the only way you're gonna be able to change that is if you do it with them. Like, there's no sense. Yeah. Like, she's like, trust me, everybody has their own problems. Every facility yes, has their own does. problems. Yeah. But if you stick to somewhere and you think you can make a difference, I was like, okay, yes, I can stick it out and I can make a difference. So I'm just gonna be vocal. And say, hey, these things need to be changing. And I do see things are being changed. Now we have a new director that's over yes. the whole entire patient services. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Jenkins, she's not a non-business type of person. She 
non no nonsense type of person. Yes. Quality care, and you 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 better do it right at the same Come time. Now. You know, so I had problems in the early end, and now she has addressed most of those, and those are the problems that you know with the staff saying, you know, yes, we are taking patients. Yes, if somebody is here at two o'clock, you're still gonna see them. All right, now and you even know. though you even though you're gonna close in thirty minutes. You have to see the patient. See that, you know, because that's what happened to me. I came in at 2 o'clock, and they're like, oh, no, we stopped taking patients at 2. You know, no, you don't. Street, one of the things that they did a lot was overbook. Yes. You know, they yes. like, I, somebody will have an appointment at 10.05, then someone will have an appointment 10 at 10.10. 10, 10, yes. Oh, 10, no, 10, no. And then 10.20 is like, you can't possibly. You can't do that. And then it gets down to that time for you to get ready to go home. But you still have all these patients, you know, and then you upset 15, and frustrated. You, frustrated. <laughs> you know what you guys did? Yeah, is, yeah. Is that we've and don't take it out on the patients. Them. So I'm, I'm, I think that's finally changing. I think they're finally listening to us. I hate rescheduling. Oh, <laughs> oh my, my doctor! Don't even talk about rescheduling with my doctor. She, mm -hmm. she killed me first, but you know, I, I, I want to give a shout out just to Thomas Street and, yes. and give. We are doing better. We are improving. And if you need to get an HIV test, Thomas Street does offer free HIV testing. And you can get your PrEP medication from Thomas right. Street as well, too. So it's no longer for people living with HIV. It's people who want to stay HIV negative and who are on PrEP. You can get your labs done there. You can do your... Is there a cost for that? There, it is. It's no cost. I believe. Okay, no good. Zero cost. Did y'all hear that? There is yes. no cost. So it's no excuse. Yes, we'll get you. And now we just completed... Um, we've been working on this for a long time, but it's same day practices. Oh. So you see the doctor that same day, and you're walking out that same day with medication. Oh, that's, that's good. That is, and that, and that, I've been, we've been, I've been, you know, and BBZ was one of the first people who did that. And I went to the Thomas Street Clinic, and I was like, "Yo, how come Be Busy can do this, and we're not able to?" They're like, oh, it's a bunch of legal stuff. I'm like, well, like, can you guys get with your attorneys? Can you guys find out the stuff? And eight months later, voila. It's taken eight months, but now somebody who's newly diagnosed. Well, what if you never diagnosed. said anything about it? You know, you yes. It. It never, never, that's, never what you kept, that's what I get away from this, just like a person that's getting in there. If you never say anything and we never have a conversation, we'll never get anything done. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing yep. you say. Basically, yeah, basically, we have to have a conversation. We have to get up and do something because if we don't, nothing's going to happen so, or change. Um, Izzy, I can call you Izzy now because I know you. Yes. <laughs> um, any last words you want to give yes. out to somebody, a, a, a teenager, uh, somebody, uh, uh, anybody who's listening out there that maybe is on the fence about getting HIV tests or maybe it has done an oral that the, and they're like oh it came out positive but that's not true you know how do you how, what would your suggestion be to lead them into care and it, get stay into care you know the first thing that i want to say is hiv is not what you think hiv is not this big scary thing that yes. that you're not able to tackle or conquer yes um it's something that is treatable yes a person living with hiv will live longer than someone with heart disease on yes. I mean, yes. Just put yes. it like that, you know. I always say, I'm going to die something. But I'm going to be HIV. <laughs> That's the least of my word. We, let's talk about my high blood. All right. Yes. <laughs> you know. Yes. So, my nerves. Uh, yeah, let's talk about my nerves. Let's, let's, let's talk about the, the baby running around. Yes, yeah, getting on my nerves. <laughs> let's, let's talk about a light bill. That's yes. But, you know, All this other stuff. I, I just say it's not something that you should be afraid of. Getting into treatment is part of the battle. Yes. You know, and it comes down to the thing. Either you want to do something about it don't. or you don't. You know. And it's just that simple. That you have to mean. It's just, just that simple. It's just that simple. Yes. Thank you so much for coming on our show. Yes. Um, you know, just a quick shout out to everybody uh, for Houston I Am Life for yes. uh, for having them and you know for having you as their ambassador. You have done so much for the community. Uh, how, if somebody wants to reach out to you, um, get in touch with you, how can they find you? Well, you can always find me on Facebook at Isaac D Joseph. That's yes. I S A A C D Joseph. And you can also contact Project Red at 281-410-5626. And that number is for people who may have, is living? That number is for people who are want to know more about HIV, 
um, want to know more about mental health, um, they need a support system. We are a peer support organization. And that also needs some type of language to hear. Now, are struggling to yes. find language. Uh, we are there for all of that. We're there to walk you through the whole situation. Can you give out the number one more time? That number is 281-410-5626. Thank you so much. And that's incredible. Yes. Um, project And Project Red is just an incredible thing. Where is Project start. Red? Where are you located? Uh, well, we're... Uh, the, we're leading the conversation online and offline. Oh, okay. Uh, mostly online because uh, today is we live in the 21st century. Yes. Come on now. Yes. Everybody is permanently attached to their phone. So I love it. It's easier for you to give us a quick shout out if you need some type of peer support. Just, quick text. Just send us a text. That number is also mobile. Send us a text and we can set I up love some that video idea. time um, and everything. Yeah. That's good. Using new technology. I love yeah. it. I love it. Yes. Any closing, um, Lady Hell? I know you have a couple things coming on. Um, the last thing we're doing is Thomas Street Clinic tomorrow. Oh, that's our last and event. That's oh the goodness. last oh, event. Lord. And normally I had to make the church announcement with all the <laughs> stuff I am. I'm like, okay, <laughs> church announcements, everybody. So, only thing, the last thing I'm doing is Thomas Street Clinic tomorrow. We have more Builder Bands. We thank Cole for donating and if you missed the Christmas like tour, you missed something amazing. We went all over the city and we went out of town. Where we yes. went to Magnolia? We went to oh, Mag well. We went to we went to all the way to Magnolia. That's not all over the city. That's I know we went out of town. We went to we went to Magnolia. We went to Memorial City. Yeah, we went to Memorial City. Memorial. Okay, I know. I was we had like, food and snacks and toys and gifts. We had a really, yes. we want to thank First Class Tours and our buds, and we want to thank yes. Gabriel Handmade Goods, because yes, while we're there, they yes. brought a generous check for us, so we can be doing something. So the kids voted, they wanted to go to Moody Garden next year, so we we're going to be working on and Moody it was, Garden. It was, it was incredible that the bus was full. It was no, but it, it was incredible that the kids were like, I've never been on the bus before. And I've they've never, never been out of, out of the town, I've never been, like, Galveston or anywhere like they I never been. Been on new field trips like they used I know to. and oh. I'm shocked. And we talked to Thornwood, Thornwood, and that's it. I'm tired of the Houston Zoo and Dewberry Farm. Right, so that's why we wanted to take, especially our children and our community, we wanted to take them out and give them some more exposure. So, and I, we had, I talked to um, Josh, we were trying to find maybe some more teenagers or youth with HIV AIDS because we want to, um, I don't know, was that the right term to say? Okay. I wanted to make sure we include those children. We do not want to leave them out. So, y'all can contact yeah. Josh. We want to get them involved because we have a lot of field trips. We have a lot of things we do in the community that people give us donations, you know, gift cards and stuff. So we don't want to leave that population out. Because we were trying to find them because we had a lot of uh, school supplies. We were trying to find some some of the kids, but we just didn't know where to start and where to go. You know, yeah. and, and, and I, you know what I'll do? I'll, mm -hmm. I'll look up that for you. Right, and get and with I, Josh for next year. We can, so, so we yeah, can we can start adding them finding into. The, to finding teenagers and, and who are living positive, mm -hmm. especially in the community. We yes. help them, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Right, that's we, that, we couldn't you know, find it out. Privy to. Okay, finding out if you those, know yeah. somebody yeah. that had, that you talked to, and you know so I'm not not saying we're gonna expose them. We just want to well, include I, them. I you know I had the Bering Gate Omega here, mm -hmm. um, and they they host with runaway kids. Yes. Who um, and they don't have to be living with HIV. But yeah, we are, just want to support them know, with some so of the things I, we I, have. I want to do a show that's every Sunday at at Bering Omega. They have a Sunday service where they get to eat. Yes. And have a dinner provided for them. At least they have one good meal, meal. every day, every week. And um, it's for, you know, kids. And I'm like, I really want to go there. It's just happens to be, I haven't had a chance to. But yeah. I think that they're just. That's a start for us. That's a start for us. And it's a lot of organizations that are out there that we just need to link up with. Yes, to make yes. sure that we have a, a broad area. And spread the word. You know, I, I want to be able to do more. Yes. It's, it's, I guess I've only been a year for being diagnosed, but. 
it feels like a lifetime. Mm, yeah. it, it feels like I've been like this for a long time, and I now that like I'm, I'm 20 years in the game, <laughs> I know, and, and I'm, I'm so, I, I'm, I'm so like impressed by all the stuff that you've done. Yes, it yes, is, it is um, amazing. So yes, and I like your spirit. I like your attitude. Um, even though this is my first time meeting you, you have a heart for what you're doing. Yes. There's no fakeness. Everything is real. It's coming from your heart, not just a job for you. It's coming from your heart. And I really appreciate that. If this was a job, I'd be writing it off. Okay, <laughs> now, come on now. Come on now. All right, guys. All right, well, thank you so much. Thank you to our listeners for tuning in. You've been listening to Pause Impact, Houston's first radio show yes. dedicated to people living with HIV, their friends and family. On Real Talk 100 Radio, my co-host Lady Hill. She's yes. on Tuesdays tomorrow, from, tomorrow from six to eight thirty, and it's gonna be wild in here tomorrow. tomorrow. Y'all better be here uh, early. That's, that's I'm, I'm, request, I'm requesting security and okay. all the above tomorrow. <laughs> all it's, hands it's on deck. It's gonna be <laughs> lit in here tomorrow. But so. until next time, <laughs> <laughs> we have to go. Um, all right. But stay tuned for yes. um, After Dark with Malcolm Lisa. Good night.